Hey guys, so several people have asked me to do something about um, fonts and text rendering in OpenGL. So that's the topic for today. Now there are different ways in which you can go about it. Some people like to do everything from scratch, like actually loading the fonts into textures or creating the fonts themselves and also the texture coordinates and take care of the positioning of the textures of the fonts on the screen. Now in situations like this I like to go with the library approach and there are probably different libraries available for that but the only one that I'm familiar with is called the FreeTypeGL so this is what I'm going to show you today. Now it was created by Nicolas Rogier and it's not the easiest library to install so I hope that by the end of this video you'll have a better idea of how to uh, install it and use it in your OpenGL games and applications. Now FreeTypeGL, uh, as you can tell by the name, is based on FreeType, which is a, a lower level library for loading um, TrueType fonts and various other uh, font types. As far as I know it is mostly used on Linux to render fonts in standard GUI applications. So FreeTypeGL serves as the connecting piece between FreeType and the OpenGL frame buffer. Now I'm going to show you how to build both uh, FreeType and FreeTypeGL and integrate it into your application. But if you want to go the shorter path, then I'll put the, the binaries that we're going to uh, create on my GitHub repository so you can use them directly. But you know, it's always good to know the entire process because in the future, if you want to upgrade one of the components, you will be able to do this on your own. So let's start by downloading FreeType and I'll put all the links in the video description below. But you can type it download FreeType and we will take the stable release. And the latest version as of today is 2.13 from February 9th, 2023. So let's grab this file and I'm going to create a directory called work and everything that we do today uh, will be done there. So I'll save the file there. And before we begin, I'll create another directory called lib. And this is where I'm going to put all the libraries, all the lib files, as well as the DLLs that we are going to build. So let's extract free type and you get a tar file. So let's extract this again. Now I initially tried to use CMake to create a Visual Studio project for free type but I ended up running into different problems. So um, what did work for me was to use the Visual Studio solution that exists as part of the, of the release, which you can find in Builds, Windows, uh, VC 2010. As you can see, we have a solution here. Let's open it. Now make sure that you have the correct build type here. So debug if, if you want to actually debug this, but I'll choose release and x64 and we can now rebuild the entire solution. Okay, that was easy. As you can see, we have both a freetype.lib file and a freetype DLL. So we need to copy both into our work slash lib folder and we can find these guys in objs, x64 re uh, release and we have a freetype DLL and freetype.lib. Okay, so let's copy them into our lib directory. It's simply easier to reference stuff when you know that everything is in a single location. Okay, so we are done with FreeType. Now let's uh, clone the sources of FreeTypeGL. So I'm using Tor to his Git, but you can use any Git client that you want. So just copy the URL of FreeTypeGL here, and the target directory is work slash FreeType-GL. FreeTypeGL also has a Visual Studio solution that we can use inside the FreeType Visual C folder. Here it is, FreeType GL. Let's open it. And now it tells me that the project is using an earlier version of Visual C++ platform toolset. So you want to update it to the latest Windows SDK version that you have. And also the platform toolset should be upgraded to whatever is the highest that you have. Let's click OK. OK, let's also set this for release build x64. Let's build the solution. And now we have a few problems here. Uh, it is looking for the free type headers and also uh, glue.h. Okay, so right click the project, go to properties. Make sure that you are in the correct configuration, okay? Because the default is debug and I'm in release right now. 
So now let's go to additional include directories and I'll put the absolute path to the free type headers, which is free type slash include. Okay, select this, click OK, OK, and let's try to build this again. Okay, so the free type errors are gone and now we only need to find glue.h. So if you don't have glue in your system, you'll need to download it somewhere and configure the include directory in the project. But I actually have glue.h in my Git repository, so I'll point the project there. Okay, so let's go back to the properties, the same location. And in addition to free type, let's add another directory. And this time I'm going to my sources under ogldev slash include. I have a directory called gl and the glue.h file is in there. So let's select include. And despite all these warnings, we are okay and we have free type gl.lib. Now this is a static library. So if you want to change this to a DLL, you need to go to the project properties again. And under general, you need to change the configuration type from static library uh, to a dynamic library, a DLL. Okay. And now we are getting a lot of unresolved external symbols from the free type library as well as glue and uh, a few OpenGL calls. So let's add a free type library to the linker path. In properties, we go to linker and input and let's add free type.lib. Put a semicolon here. Now it still needs to know where to find this file. So let's go to general and we have additional library directories. So here we can simply put our work slash lib folder because we know we have copied free type.lib here okay so like that okay let's see where we are okay so the free type errors are gone and we are left with a few uh, unresolved symbols from glue and uh, gl so let's go back to the properties to the linker and input and we need to add glue32.lib and i also have the binary on my git repo so let's add the directory for that, the link directory, which is OGL dev windows and lib. Okay, okay. So we still have a few unresolved OpenGL functions and I don't know why Glue didn't fix it, but it turns out that these functions are coming from an old OpenGL 32 lib um, library, which is part of windows. So you can sometimes find this online and it is also available from the windows SDK which I have installed here. So let's go back hopefully for the final time to linker input and add opengl32.lib, put a semicolon. And then in the additional library directories, so I'll just paste the path to the folder here. Okay, and everything is built correctly. So now let's copy our DLL file to the work slash lib directory. Here's the DLL, copy it here. Now you probably want to see how FreeTypeGL actually works and it does come with a set of a few demos, but unfortunately they are not so easy to install. So let's take care of that. So first we will need to build GLFW, which is of course the library that we're using for OpenGL windowing. If you're not familiar with that, I have a video about how to bring up OpenGL on Windows, which includes GLFW. So let's go to GLFW download and grab the latest source package. Put this in our work directory and extract it. Now to build GLFW, you will need CMake, which is very easy to install. Just go to their website, download the binary package for Windows, double click, next, next, next as usual and you've got it installed. So back to our extracted GLFW directory, you can right click here and open in terminal. And now you need to type in this command to create a Visual Studio solution. You will find this in the video description, of course. And now we can go to build and we have a GLFW.SLN file here. So let's fire up Visual Studio. Again, change to release build and build the entire solution. Now we need to create a few more CMake files 
for the integration with the demos of FreeTypeGL. So we need to type in cmake dash dash install build dash dash prefix install. And you can see that it creates a directory called glfw install with a few libraries and cmake files. So now we need to go back to FreeTypeGL into the demos directory and we need to add it cmakelist.txt using your favorite editor and add this command which as you can see appends this uh, path which is relative to the cmake prefix path. This is so that the free type GL demos will be able to find glfw. Now to build the demos we need to create a Visual Studio solution using the cmake file, cmake list file in the free type GL demos folder. Okay, so we go there, run cmake dot, and this creates a project.sln in the demos directory. Let's open this. I'll leave this one in debug build because this is just a demo. And if we build this directly, then we're getting a lot of errors such as a missing free type gl.h file which is a bit silly because it exists in the directory above us. So we need to add the include directory to the project, but we have a lot of projects here. So let's select almost uh, all of them, except generate embedded font, which is not really a project, which is not really a demo. And right click, go to properties. And this time we are in debug and in the C++ general additional include directories, we add the free type GL directory. Okay, this one, the root directory where we have free type GL.h. So let's build just one demo so that we are not flooded with tons of errors. And as you can see, we're getting an error that config.h is missing. And um, turns out that this file doesn't really exist or is not really required or, or whatever. So I'm going to comment it out. And now we need glue.h again. So same thing, select everything, right click properties, and we need the OGL dev include directory again for glue.h. Let's build the first one. So now we're getting a lot of errors from screenshot util.c and the reason is a missing include file. So we need to include std int.h. Let's try this again. And now it builds, but it cannot find freetypegl.lib. Now, previously when we built freetypegl DLL, it actually didn't create freetypegl.lib that we need for the DLL file. So I'm going to go back to static linking of freetypegl and try to debug this later. So back to the freetypegl solution in freetypegl visual C. I'm going to change this back to static library. And now we're getting the lib file here. So let's copy this to our work lib. And back in our demos project, select everything. This time, make sure you skip demo utils because it doesn't have a linker configuration. And in linker general, add work slash lib. Okay, we also need free type and glue. I'm gonna do this in one go. We need free type, free type dot lib, as well as glue 32 dot lib. And I'm going to add the location of glue, which is in my uh, repo. Okay, so OGL dev slash windows and lib. Okay, looks like we only need opengl32.lib, same as before. In linker input, additional dependencies, opengl32.lib, and the directory. And now it builds okay, let's try to build everything. Okay, so a few of them failed, but let's set the first one as a startup project and run this. And of course it is missing free type DLL because we need to add work slash lib to the runtime path, okay? And this one is here in debugging environment. I'm going to paste in the entire path, which is both the relative path to our work slash lib, 
and also the path to my OGL dev slash windows slash DLL folder where I have glue. So let's try this again. And as you can see, it is working correctly. And the free type GL can render using different colors and uh, change the style from uh, um, normal to italic, bold, etc. And also do ASCII art. Okay, so I know this was a bit convoluted and there are probably better ways to get this up and uh, running, but this is the best method that I'm familiar with. So if you have tips and comments, make sure to write them in the comment section below. As I said, all the binaries that we have generated today will be checked into my Git repo, so you can just use them if you run into any problem. We still need to learn how to actually integrate FreeTypeGL into your own application. So this will be in the second part of this video, so make sure to subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and I will see you on the next one.